Hey everybody, Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved. Um, this is the channel where I solve the physics homework problems provided to me by my tutoring clients. So see the video description below uh, for a way to contact me if you would like um, a private tutor for physics. Uh, my rates are reasonable and I'm really good at this. And hey, if you find this uh, helpful, please give it a like. Um, maybe share it with a friend, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're a physics student. And um, hey, so let's get to today's problem. Um, so uh, here we go. We have a 1,423 kilogram car, and it's moving along a level highway with a speed of 26.4 meters per second. The driver takes the foot off the accelerator, and the car experiences a retarding force of 901 newtons, over a distance of 106 meters. Determine the speed of the car after traveling this distance. Now this is one of those problems that you could use uh, kinematics to solve. Um, force and kinematics, you, you know the mass of the car. This turns out to be the net force on the car. Therefore you can figure out the acceleration, you know the initial velocity, you know the displacement, so you can find that final velocity. But we're going to use the work energy theorem uh, to slow this car down. And uh, because that's what my client is studying right now, they're studying work and energy and so on. So let's give it a try. Now, um, if, uh, if you think you know what you're doing, why don't you pause the video and give it a, give it a shot and then uh, restart the video and compare your work with mine. You do need to uh, have a basic understanding of work, what is the definition of work in physics, and then the work energy theorem. Of course, I'll explain these things as part of the solution to this problem. All right, so we're gonna use energy methods to do this. So let, let me uh, draw a picture of the problem. So here's my road, my level road, and I'm gonna draw the car, so here's my little Volkswagen bus looking car, and it has a mass of 1,423 kilograms. It's moving with an initial velocity of 26.4 meters per second. Um, there is a retarding force, and now, what do we mean by retarding force? It's, it's trying to take the motion away. Um, it's trying to slow the car down. And, um, and this is air resistance and rolling resistance of the tires, the friction in the bearings, anything that's you know gonna make this car slow down. And that retarding force, I'll just call it F sub R, is equal to 901 Newtons. And the car is going to move a total, a total displacement of 106 meters from here over to here. Now the car hasn't stopped. Well, maybe it stopped, I don't know, but um, but it has slowed down. And so we wanna know what is this final velocity? So that's what we're trying to find, is the final velocity. Now, quite often when you have a problem like this where you could use um, uh, like a free body diagram and uh, you know, Newton's second law to figure out the acceleration, and then you can use kinematics to figure out uh, the final velocity. Um, uh, when you have a problem like that, quite often you can use energy to do it, especially if they're asking for the final velocity. Um, quite often it's easier to find uh, uh, the final velocity using energy methods. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's solve it. Now, this force is going to slow this car down. And I'm going to draw a free body diagram of the car. Here's the car. And we've got um, gravity. Of course, we have a normal force. And then we have this retarding force, which I'll just kind of show going back like this. And, um, and I think you can see... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm off screen. I, so I think you can see that... Look. The normal force is just supporting the weight, so there's no net force here. This is my net force. There's nothing opposing it, and so um, and so this is really so we can say, hey, the retarding force is equal to the net force. That's an important thing. So now I'm going to use the work energy theorem, and it's one of my favorite equations because it's so simple. 
um, it just says the work done by the net force on an object will be equal to the change in kinetic energy of the object. Um, that is the work energy theorem, sometimes called the work energy principle or, or whatever, it depends on the book. And um, so if we can figure out how much work was done, we can figure out what the change in kinetic energy and of course, uh, velocity is part of that. So let's expand both of these terms. I can tell that this is my net force. So that's going to be the force of the um, that retarding force. It's my net force. And then times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. And of course, this is equal to k final minus k initial. Anytime you see a delta like this, the change, that's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy of the object. And so, um, and let's, uh, let's take a look at, uh, let's expand this out a little bit more. Now, fr times delta x times the cosine of angle between the force and displacement vectors. That's what that angle is there. This is going to be one half the mass times the final velocity squared and uh, minus a minus, right? The kinetic energy is one half mv squared. The initial squared, see? There we go. Well, uh, do I, now let's figure out what I know. Do I know the retarding force? Yes, 901 newtons. Do I know delta x? Yes, 106 meters. Do I know the angle between the force and the displacement vector? Yeah, because the displacement vector is to the right, but the force is to the left. Now, what angle is between to the right and to the left? Don't tell me it's zero. No, uh, to the right is, is this way, and then you have to go, 180 degrees to go that way. So uh, yeah, theta is going to be 180 degrees. So I know what it is. I know the mass. The mass is given. Do I know the final velocity? No, but that's what I'm trying to find. And do I know the initial velocity? Yeah, 26.4. So I know everything except what I'm trying to find. That's cool. So now it's just a, bu a bunch of algebra, an algebraic mess. So um, I'm going to do it in one step. You can do it in multiple steps if, if you want. Um, uh, I encourage you to do that. But I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to solve for this. V final. So what do I have to do? Well, first I have to get this to the other side. So I'm going to add 1 half m v initial squared to this side. So I have this retarding force times delta x times cosine theta. And then this is going to be plus, right? Because we're going to add it to the other side. One half the mass times the initial velocity squared. And now I, I got to get rid of this one half m. I'm going to divide by one half m uh, of the mass. OK. And so now I just need to plug all this stuff in and then type it into my calculator correctly. Um, I think I'm going to actually show you the different parts, though, because there's some things I want to talk about. So this is equal to, well, the uh, retarding force is 901 newtons. Delta x is 106 meters. Now, this is really important here, folks. Theta is the angle between the force vector and the display. We, 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 these are always positive. This is, this is almost like absolute value of, of these things times the cosine of the angle. So this is 901 one, times 106 meters times the cosine of theta, and that's 180 degrees. And what that means is that the retarding force is doing negative work. It's doing negative work. Now, negative work, what does that mean? Remember work. Work is a transfer of energy from one system into another system. Or if you're doing and if you're doing negative work on a system, that means you are taking energy away from it. You're not at you can do work. If you do positive work, you're adding energy to your system. 
you do negative work, you're taking energy away. And obviously, if you're breaking or some kind of retarding force here, you're taking energy away. Um, and, 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 and the way you get that uh, mathematically is by getting a negative um, quantity here. And that's going to be plus one half the mass is 1,432 kilograms. And then the initial velocity was 26.4 uh, meters per second squared. And then we're going to divide this by 1 half. Now, you, you could put the 2 up on the top, but I'm just going to take the mass and divide it in half of, of 1,423 kilograms, one half the mass. So let's let's do this part first. So I'll get my calculator out. Uh, and you go 901 times 106. Now, uh, equals, now it's uh, 95,506 but it's cosine 180. Now, I'll, I'll just, just to prove it to you. Okay, this is my answer. So times the cosine of 180 degrees. Boom, it gives me, just puts a negative sign out in the front. All right. So uh, I think I'm going to leave this in scientific notation because I like scientific notation. If you don't like scientific notation, that is not my problem. All right, times 10 to the 4 joules. So... This is how much energy this retarding force took away from your system. It took away all this energy, okay? And what is this? This is how much energy we had to begin with, okay? So let's see what that is. So that's 0.5 times 1,432 times 26.4 squared equals... And this is uh, 4.99 um, times, uh, uh, well, let's see, is that right? Wait, 26, 10, 0.5, yeah. Uh, this is 4.99 times 10 to the 5 joules. So much bigger, much bigger than this. Okay, but then... Uh, uh, so, so then this, I'm, I'm not going to worry about. So we're going to take these two quantities and we're going to add them together. So I'm going to, uh, so plus negative, uh, negative, uh, 9.551 times 10 to the 4. And up, up top here, I get, um, 4.5. 0, 035 if I want to carry times 10 to the 5 joules. So now what this is, this is how much energy, uh, kinetic energy, really, the car still has right here. Um, so uh, this is how much energy I started with. This is how much energy got taken away. That's why it's negative. And so you combine those and this is how much energy you have left. And it's kinetic energy, so if you divide it by one half the mass, you're going to get the velocity squared. This should be, oh yeah, velocity squared here. Bet you thought I wasn't going to catch that mistake, huh? All right, so let's do final velocity squared equals, we're going to take this number and um, divide it by half of that number. So I can just times two divide it by one, four, Two, three equals, and I get um, 567.1 meters squared per second squared. You can go through the units here and see that you would get that, but we're going to take the square root of both of these, and so my final velocity is the square root of that. And I get uh, 20. 3.8. And now this digit, I, I think actually I did this before and I got 23.7, 23.8. It, it depends on how you round these numbers off. Remember this last digit, this last digit can be a little bit off. Uh, it, it's always kind of a, an estimate. 
you know, we have three significant figures here uh, and here. This is four significant figures, but I want my answer to be three significant figures. And so that's what I'm rounding it to. Oh, not jewels. What the heck am I doing? But you thought I wasn't going to catch that one. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, and here we go. And there's our, uh, there's our problem. Back this out so we can see the whole thing. So the work energy theorem, really cool. If you have an object that's moving, or it doesn't have to be moving, but you put a net force on it, and you want to find the final velocity um, due to that net force, um, you can use kinematics and Newton's laws and, um, and all that. Or you can use the work energy theorem. Which one's better? Either. They're both, they're both perfectly good. In fact, look, doesn't this kind of look like with that V squared and all that? It kind of reminds you of that kinematic equation at V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. It kind of comes from that. But um, it all comes from the same things. But, but this is um, quite often an easier way uh, of doing this. So, hey, um, hope, hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, please give uh, the video a thumbs up. And uh, hey, if you're a physics student, um, subscribe to my channel. Because I, I don't know, I make a couple of videos like this a week. Um, and share it with your friends. And uh, cool. All right. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thank you for listening. And until next time, may the net force be with you.